we didn't have a lot when we grew up so i found that disposable cameras gave me that feeling of like being able to collect memories and i would create collages mind you they were just collages from construction paper it wasn't anything spectacular mm -hmm. but i have always found myself photographing ever since i was little <laughs> For the Marin Council of Chambers, I'm Stephanie Plant, and this is We Are One Marin. Today, Kalina and I want you to meet Tanya Rodriguez, who cut and pasted her way to fulfilling a dream. She owns Tanya and Victor Photography together with her husband, where they are role models for prospective wedding clients. Not only have they been married for nine years, between them, they represent almost 250 years of marriage in their families. Tanya draws from her lineage in other ways, too. Her parents immigrated to the United States before she was born. Her dad's career path helped her launch into photography, and her mom's life experience is guiding where Tanya takes the business next. Stay tuned as we zoom in on this San Rafael photography business and learn how Marin works. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the, the time and the attention. <laughs> well, thank you actually for having us in your beautiful studio. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been, I want to say like nine years to be able to have something like this. So I'm tell, wow. us, tell us a little bit about this space. We're in an older part of San Rafael, just off of Lincoln Avenue, adjacent to the freeway. <laughs> However, um, in this beautiful shingled old Victorian, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, I think it's an old Victorian. It is. Yes. It was built in 1906, if I'm not mistaken. So it's over a hundred years old. And wow. so it's super charming from the exterior. And I would imagine as couples, engaged couples come walking in to have their wedding photographs taken that um, it's also a very homey experience. Yeah, so um, I love it because it is a big part of, I think what our brand is. It has a slight vintage old world flair to it, but we're running it as a studio photography. So there's like a modern component and um, I love that it has um, a lot of character because sometimes I don't have to use a lot of my own backdrops or, you know, make up a lot of things to create a beautiful scene here. And the light is just gorgeous because we get morning light and we get um, a little bit of the sunset light. So what in your background brought you to want to do this work? Well, there's no artist. I don't come from a line of artists. I do come from a line of musicians. My dad is a musician, um, but he's a pastor here in San Rafael. Mm. Um, the church is as old as me. So right when I was born, my dad um, was called to be a reverend. Mm. Um, and it became the first, the first Hispanic Christian church of San Rafael. So I grew up with people. Mm -hmm. I grew up being um, listening to my dad be this motivational speaker um, and not just to um, people about spirituality and religion necessarily, but how to get through those hardships of moving countries, leaving a part of your family behind. And um, he's an immigrant um, that immigrated here in the early 80s. My mom is too. And I think both their stories combined really propelled me to go on this path of storytelling. And I think that we all do some sort of storytelling and with just the mediums that differ. Some of it, some of us tell stories through health. Some of us tell stories through hair cutting. Some of us tell stories through, you know, podcast interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some of us are literal, like photography. So yeah. I think that that's what really enamored me with this um, a passion to be able to tell people's stories and to be able to celebrate them and lift them up I was growing up in a church full of Central American Mexican immigrants. Um, also, I think people started taking note that I was doing some photography for church or doing photography for just like random events that I would just have a camera on me for. So that's how the photography aspect. Mm -hmm. I'd never thought that this was going to be something that was going to be like my career. Um, I literally thought it was just going to be a hobby, an expensive hobby at that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's how it kind of ventured off. And that's why I started to go into the wedding world was because I saw that there was um, a need there, especially for um, Spanish speaking communities here. I, I would imagine that gives you a unique space here in, in the county. Yeah. Something you can offer that not, that not a lot of people are offering. I want to say that maybe 
40% of my clients only speak Spanish or feel more comfortable with me speaking Spanish only to them. So um, I've had people come to me and say, I'm so glad you speak Spanish because my husband family does not speak any English. So I'm glad that you're going to be able to direct us. And so that's a huge sure. compliment. And, you know, I owe it all to my mom always speaking to us Spanish at home and and. Because you went all through uh, grade school and high school here in San Rafael? Yes, I did. Uh, Bahia Vista, Davidson Middle School, <laughs> San Rafael High. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Go Bulldogs. Yes. And then, obviously, as you said, you went on to USF uh, and back here. To, San Rafael is a hard place to leave, isn't it? <laughs> uh, to, to have your own business here in the town where you grew up. Uh, have you felt welcomed as a business person here in San Rafael? You know... I think that because I didn't see representation growing up of people like me, I didn't think it was possible here. You had no role models. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once I started looking for education, um, I started seeing uh, other brown girls like me trying to start their own business. And now on the eight, this day and age of social media, I'm seeing a lot more Latin women photographers mm-hmm. and I love that. You know, that's I love great. it, too. Mm-hmm. In the county, it's been a little difficult to make my name known just because I think that I've been also playing it safe and trying to network within my own community groups. Mm-hmm. But I would love to see more people from the county, you know, that I could help them and Thankfully, through the day and age of Facebook groups, I've been able to see more clients that never thought that I was here or just didn't know that there was a business like this, that there was a photo studio with, you can have access to studio wardrobe or you can have hair and makeup done. It's all inclusive. And I became a member of Marin Women at Work. It's a networking group. And I've met a lot of very talented women on there that I probably wouldn't have met in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I love that I probably bring a little flavor to the mix. (laughs) So I think it's just a matter of me being able to be more brave enough to kind of put my name out there, if that makes sense. Ergo, this podcast. (laughs) Yes. I'd like to talk about the transition of your business. So you and and Victor started a photography business together or you started it first? I managed a photo studio at the Image Flow down in Mill Valley for a little bit and um, got more experience, went to workshops, classes, and really honed in my skills. And then I decided to venture and create a business that was a wedding, weddings and engagements photography business. And so... My husband has been such a big supporter and was my first investor. He bought me my first camera. Mm. So he has been a part of this since day one. And it was just easier to have him as my second shooter is what we call them. I just became a husband and wife team. And he became quite the documentary style type of photographer. I'm a little bit more editorial. I'm a little bit more about the poses and gestures. So we created um, a good team, a good complement for the weddings and the engagements that we were photographing. And he's just been a part of it. You don't see him as the, on the forefront now that we're kind of pivoting and we're changing. He's behind the scenes. He's involved with a lot of the decision makings. He's on our tax forms. So <laughs> <laughs> so he's, pre- he's still a big part of it. Has COVID been a part of your pivot? Yes and no. So... I ha- got pregnant with my son in 2018. Congratulations. I, thank you. <laughs> and I found myself shooting a wedding on Friday, shooting a wedding on Saturday, and shooting a wedding on Sunday. Mm. And I realized that the business style that we had for a family probably wasn't the best fit for us just mm-hmm. because we're gone most of the weekends. Um, we're working during the week. And I thought, You know, I want to be able to spend more time with my son. And my parents are both extremely hardworking people. They are, you know, first generation immigrants here in this country. So we didn't have a lot of family time. So that's a big priority for me is to spend a lot of time together, my husband and I, and our child. So 
I wanted to see what would it look like if we change some things here in the business. And just right when I was lining up a lot of my portrait clients, that's when the pandemic happened. Mm. So I realized that it wasn't going to take off the way I had originally envisioned it. There was a point where I felt that we were going to probably close because mm. we weren't generating income and we still had an overhead of rent. Um, we had other type of overhead expenses that we need to make each month. And I was very close to closing. And then I was very frank about it on social media. Mm. But a lot of my old clients were very supportive and um, we started selling things like USBs, you know, from previous clients. Started yeah, loaded with photos. Loaded with the ah, photos, yes. Creative. Um, and started to create ways that we can still sell product to be able to make ends meet. And after that, I started to really just invite previous clients that were my wedding clients. Hmm. Um have them come in at no cost just to experience what we could offer them. And it was just really for them to be able to see what we offer now. And it started to create momentum for me at the end of 2020 um, and decided to just just do it for 20, 2021. And so we have been pivoting from the weddings and engagements to more portrait and contemporary portrait and brands. So we have expecting mamas, we have a newborn mamas that have just had their baby. Um, we have families, um, we have women who've just started their business. Um, we have women who just got divorced mm -hmm. and just want a beautiful experience with a photo shoot. We have women who um, are just graduated from college and it's they're the first in their family to do that. Or we see quinceañeras too, which are women who are like lady, like a debutante ball type of event. Um, so we have women's from all different kinds of stages in their lives walk through here. And um, so we're very excited to welcome whole all different kinds of women here in our studio space. What do you think's motivated you to shift your focus to women you know when i graduated from usf i my thesis was on the female narrative in the salvadoran civil war that occurred in the 70s and 80s my mom migrated to this country because of it she they literally had no means no way of making income in el salvador she was the first of three girls raised by a single mom living in a shack she had no house and she found herself trying to attend university in her country or moving countries i realized that my mom has always been a hard-working woman as many moms are and just seeing the way that she's made herself a woman here she came here as a kid and now she's a woman she's a grandma with a four-bedroom house in renwood in San Rafael. And so I find so much inspiration in her story and how much she gives and how much she puts other people first. And I think as women, we do that. We're caregivers. We're breadwinners. We are moms. We're hustlers. We're living in a very unique time where we can choose to be moms and we can choose to be business owners. And I really want to celebrate that. And I think that what better way to do that than with a portrait of yourself at this point in time where you're going through a change or whether you triumphed or whether you had some losses, but you're here and now this picture will forever tell you who you were in this season of life. I had a mother-daughter um, that came in that they just lost their their husband and, mm. and their, the dad, the husband and their brother all in the span of three months um. and they wanted to do something amazing for themselves something that they probably wouldn't have in previous years mm -hmm. and i just feel very honored and privileged to be able to be the medium that they tell their stories through it seems like you're seeing a lot through your lens um, more than you know just what meets the eye yeah that's a big part of our brand i started to see that there was a big need for something like this here in the Bay Area, a place where women can feel like they're being celebrated, where they can get pampered while also kind of 
um, delving in as to why they're here, why they're celebrating, what what is their journey, you know, what brought them here to the first place. And I love that. And I think that it really brought me back to my roots of why I started photographing people. And it was to tell stories and not just stories about an event, a stories about, you know, the hardships, um, the, the darker parts of life mm-hmm. and how those are just as celebratory as our wins and that all delved from conversations here with women feeling absolutely comfortable to kind of just let their hair down just kind of bear their heart to us um i have a hair and makeup artist who works with me her name is talia and we have these deep deep conversations before the photo shoot happens Mm -hmm. well you're giving a gift you really are uh it sounds like you're a good listener yeah (laughs) well i try to be Uh, (laughs) i I try to be. Tell me, if we were to check back with you in a year, oh Lord, <laughs> what are, where are you shifting? Because I think there's a transition coming. Oh, you know, um, I want to keep doing this. It's photographing women, celebrating the stories, creating a safe space for them to feel um, completely empowered to be who they are. And I want to continue helping women maybe you know, I put this on my vision board. I put a little podcast thing Aww. on my vision board for this year. That makes two of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is this is pretty uh pretty cool how the universe works and yes. creating this, manifesting this. So maybe doing more podcasts would be really great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really I love to be able to um, share stories of, of the women that I've met. And I don't know, maybe maybe coach um, women who are thinking about starting a business like this too would be really great. Photography is a big part of um, social media and online presence. And so I think that there is a need for, um, you know, more and more um, creatives or women who or people who need maybe some guidance on how to photograph, on how to curate, on how to... Um, do all that all those graphics i think that there's a big need for that especially nowadays with the pandemic where everything was virtual um so i would love to kind of help women um reach their business goals that way too i think (laughs) uh there's gonna be a line down the front steps (laughs) pretty soon from your mouth to god's ears (laughs) what's the best way for people to find you tanya so um right now our website is tanyanvictor.com and i'm on instagram so tanya rodriguez photo now i'm on tiktok because that's what's in right that's That's what my (laughs) that's what my 18 year old daughter says (laughs) um but we are located here in san rafael um 1811 grand and you'll see this huge victorian house and we're at the very top so if you ever want to come and hang out drink some kombucha or rose hey yes i'm here yes yes (laughs) It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Your spirit is contagious. Oh, thank you. Thank you. If you want to join the conversation or make suggestions, reach us at weareonemarin at gmail.com. The Marin Community Foundation generously sponsors this podcast. Our theme music is performed by a student at Enriching Lives Through Music. Elm is in San Rafael's Canal Neighborhood. Finally, a reminder to support diverse local businesses and shop Marin.